Hey guys, this is Jamin with PC Monkey. We're bringing you another do-it-yourself computer repair video today. I have an ASUS laptop here, and we're gonna be showing you how to address the problem of your computer turning on, but your screen not displaying. Now this can manifest itself in a couple different ways. It can either stay completely black, uh, it, it can light up a little bit, but not actually display anything. Uh, but in either case, your computer's turning on, nothing's showing up on your screen. Now keep in mind this video is especially for that issue. If you have a different issue, you're gonna need a different video. So for example, if your computer's not turning on at all, uh, you're gonna need to reference video number one in the description down bottom. That'll be a fix for that. This is specifically for the issue that we just mentioned. Now with any computer repair, keep in mind there's probably a troubleshooting process involved. There could be many different things causing your problem. So the idea with troubleshooting is we try to go for the easiest or the cheapest fixes first. And once we've determined those are not the cause, we move on to the more expensive, more complicated repairs later. So in this case of this problem that we're facing here, one of the easiest fixes it could be is a RAM issue. And it's easy because RAM's kind of cheap and it's easily accessible in your computer. So to show you what I'm talking about, let's turn the computer on. As you can see, my lights are coming on. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but my fan's kicking in and starting. So this computer is turning on and it's not turning itself off. It, it's loading, but as you, as you can see, the screen's staying completely black. So let's get in there and see if it's a RAM issue. So I'm gonna hold my power button down, turn the computer off. There we go. Now hopefully you have an easily accessible uh, access panel like I have. I've already taken my screws out because I have secretly put a bad stick of RAM in here. RAM is kind of like headlights in a car. It is possible that they both go at the same time, but it's far more likely that one goes bad and the other one's good. So I have put a bad stick of RAM. What you want to do first is you want to reseat your RAM. Reseating means taking it out and then putting it back in. Sometimes they come loose. You can drop your computer or hit it or sometimes they come loose if, if these things start to go in an old computer. But take it out, put it in snug, clip it in, make sure it's in there good. So just reseat your RAM, try it again. In my case, that's not gonna work because I know this is bad. I put it in there for the video. So let's take that stick out and this is gonna be how you diagnose whether your RAM is, is, is the issue. So I'm gonna take out one stick of RAM, put it off the side, and try starting my computer with just that one stick. Again, computer's turning on, lights are coming on, screen staying black. Oh, didn't even turn on that time. So that was not a successful test. So we're gonna flip that over. We're gonna remove this one and put this one back in. Flip it over. Okay, computer, oh, and now my display works. So that's how you would test to see if one of your headlights or one of your sticks of RAM is, is going bad. Now I know this RAM stick is bad. So you'd replace this RAM stick. Um, in video number two in the description, there'll be a video on how to order these that fit your computer. Not all RAM is compatible with all computers and there's a lot of numbers there. So video two in the description will help you order the right RAM uh, for your computer. Okay, so now I'm just gonna turn my computer off and act like this didn't happen so that we can show you the next thing to diagnose if your RAM checks out and it doesn't seem to be a RAM issue. So the next thing we're doing uh, after the RAM diagnostic, if the RAM did not check out to be the problem, we're gonna check out your CMOS battery, C-M-O-S. Uh, your CMOS battery is right here. I have an open computer here for you to see it. That's one version of a CMOS battery. It'll have some sort of electrical tape on it with a cord that plugs into the motherboard, or it will look like this. It'll just be an open, loose battery that fits into a port. So that's what we're going after. And the reason why we're doing this second, this is an unlikely cause of the issue. I'd say one out of 20 times this happens to be the reason why you're experiencing these computer symptoms. But we're checking it out second because it's such a cheap repair. These things cost nothing. Um, and it's usually very easy to, once you get your computer open, to swap out this battery. So it's an unlikely culprit, but it's a very cheap, easy repair. 
Uh, if you want some additional help with this, uh, look at our video number three in the description. That'll show you how to perform a BIOS reset of a computer. And while that's not what we're doing, that will show you very in-depthly how to get into a computer, access your CMOS battery, and swap it out. So if you're on the CMOS battery part of this diagnostic process, video three should help you there. So now if we've identified that it's not your RAM and it's not your CMOS battery, now we're gonna move on to start diagnosing whether it's your LCD or your LCD cable. Even though this is a little more complicated and invasive, uh, it unfortunately is very likely that your LCD is not working because your LCD is bad. Um, so to diagnose this, the first thing we wanna do, the easiest way to diagnose this first, is to take an external monitor. Uh, you can also use a, a TV if you don't have an external monitor, uh, but to take an external monitor, hook it up to the computer to see if, if it's able to display. And if it does, what that tells us is your computer's working fine and it's sending out an image, it's just this isn't picking it up. Uh, so to show you what we mean, let's turn this on. So again, the lights are coming on, you can't hear it probably, but all, all, all the fans are kicking on. This computer is activating, but my screen's just staying black. So I'll go ahead and shut this off. Okay, I'm gonna take my external monitor, I'm gonna plug it into my computer. Now you can do this a couple different ways. This one is using a VGA port. You'll recognize these, this is like the old style from the old desktops and TVs. Or you could also use what's called an HDMI cord. And usually laptops will have one or both of these. Let me show you the side of this laptop. This laptop has both. It's got your VGA here and your HDMI here. So this would plug in here. This one's here. So we're gonna take this external monitor, we're gonna plug it into the laptop to see if it can get a signal. All right, so let's make sure this is on. All right, so let's turn the computer back on. Oh, right there, see? So the computer's turning on, you don't see anything here but you're seeing it on the external monitor. So my computer's working. I just need to replace either my LCD or my LCD cable. Now keep in mind, you're gonna have to restart the computer with the monitor plugged in. Um, you can't turn it on, have the screen black, and then plug it in and have it work. Uh, so plug it in, shut the computer down, and then restart it. And as you can see, my computer's working fine. It's just my, it's not displaying. So this would be the first test you run. If this test succeeds like it is now, you would then diagnose your LCD or your LCD cable. So in a lot of computers, what you'll find is they don't like external monitors. So in, in our case, this test worked very well and it identified our problem. But if your test does not work this well and if it does not display on the external monitor, that doesn't mean you're done. Sometimes computers don't like these things especially when they know they still have access to their own LCD. Now on some computers, there'll be a button that you can find that says display to an external monitor. If your computer has that, you can even Google your model to make sure whether you do or don't. If you do have that button, activate it so that this will send the image there. If you don't have that button, there's a way that you can try to force the computer to do that. So in order, so in order to force this to send the image to the external monitor, I'm gonna to have to open it up and unplug my LCD cable, which would be denying my computer access to the LCD. So we're gonna open the computer up, which I've already done. Gonna open my computer up. And first thing you wanna do with any internal repair you're doing is remove your battery. Get so I'm gonna unplug my charger cord. I'm gonna take my battery out, get power out of this computer make it a little safer to work on. Now this is my LCD cable. So this LCD cable unplugs from the port, slides right out, like that. Sometimes you'll see an LCD cable that instead of sliding into a port, it snaps on uh, to a connection, but those are the two most common. So now that I've unplugged this, I'm gonna put my computer back together. So you, after you put your battery back in, you can plug your charger in if you want to, and then you can try displaying this to an external monitor, and this will uh, try to force it to send the image there. So at this point in the video, we've gone over your RAM, we've gone over your CMOS battery, and we've identified in depth whether it's your LCD or LCD cable. 
Uh, side point, if you really want to swap out your LCD or LCD cable on video four in, in the description, it takes you in depth how to get at an LCD, turn around, replace it. If, if you're at that stage and you've identified that as your issue, video four is, is what you'll want to look at. Now the last thing you can check uh, before you write off your motherboard as bad and replace it uh, is your CPU. Now your CPU is also, like the CMOS battery, it's an unlikely culprit for this issue, but it is something that does happen from time to time. Now the reason why it's unlikely is because motherboards are designed to kind of sacrifice themselves first to save the CPU. So usually what you'll see is a motherboard dying far before the CPU will die. But again, it does happen. So to check out your motherboard, what you'll want to do is take your model number on your computer and go look at its motherboard, maybe on a site like eBay where you have a, a bunch of pictures. And this is what you're gonna wanna look for. These are two different kind of motherboards that could be in your computer as far as this, the, the CPU goes. And what you're gonna wanna look at, if it's this kind of motherboard, and it looks like this, your CPU is integrated into your motherboard. It's not gonna come up. So that, at, at this point, you'd replace your motherboard. So this CPU is integrated into the motherboard. It, you can't get it up. You'd need to replace your motherboard at this point. If you see a motherboard like this, your CPU comes out. So maybe you see the motherboard online and it looks like this. And it's got a square port with a bunch of holes in it. That means your CPU is removable. Yeah, don't mistake it for this chip. You're gonna to wanna to look for this or the larger of the two here. So if your motherboard does look like this and you can replace your CPU, and that's your last test you can run of whether your computer can be fixed or if you need a new motherboard. If after that test it's still not working, then again, you'd need to swap out your motherboard. So we've taken you through the entire range of things that could be showed you how to diagnose every single point. Um, and if you do need help changing out your motherboard, it's a complicated repair, let us know. Um, maybe we can find a video for you in, a, in our inventory that shows you how to get into your own computer's motherboard. So uh, please like and share if this video was helpful, if it helped you get through your issue. Uh, please subscribe if you enjoyed do-it-yourself computer videos. Thank you so much for watching.